presenters. Classic, huh? Classic. How are you? How are you this morning? How is your weekend? How are you in, if you're in Victoria, handling lockdown once again? I'm finding it fine. I'm kind of an introvert, even though I come across as an extrovert. Good morning, Christy. So welcome to Tea with Tanja Lee. This is where I provide free leading life and business coaching right into your handset, laptop, phone, whatever device you're on, whether you're in bed, whether you're walking, whether you're driving to work. I just show up every Monday and Friday to uh, you know, support you in getting clear about your intentions and what you want to create for yourself and where you're stuck, and also to answer any Q and A. And that's what we do on Fridays. Monday is all about setting intentions and re really uncovering what would you love for yourself in your life. So we're going to get started. We're going to get this this show on the road. Uh, some people. So I'd love you if you're watching to start thinking about what is your intention for this week. Uh, what project do you want to launch? What conversation do you want to have? What item do you need to tick off? What idea do you need to birth? What room do you need to clean? What business action do you need to take? What, like, what relationship do you need to f help flourish? Where are you potentially stuck? Where are you procrastinating? Where are you oscillating? Where are you avoiding? And how it works is you just share your intention. I read through a few. I pick one and then we get going. You know, I just choose one and we start providing some, I start providing some coaching. People have had breakthroughs and got their, um, you know, websites up and running. Hey, Christy. Uh, people have um, gone and applied for new jobs. They've healed decades of trauma. They've had tough conversations that they've needed to have with people. Like there's a lot that people have done to um, as a part of these sessions. Good morning, Suzanne. How are you? So please start writing in on either Facebook or Instagram. What are you intending for yourself in your life this week? What would you love to make manifest? What would you love to see happen? And this is my first cup of Genma Cha. Um... So something I want to share as these things are coming in, just found your Greek word post, maraki, maraki, yes, which is about putting your heart and soul. Thanks, Melissa Turner on Facebook. It's about putting your heart and soul into everything that you do. Uh, I this, this weekend, as people are writing in their intentions, and please, guys, like, I don't have any predetermined, I don't determined, I don't have any pretend intentions. You know, there's a lot of people that do coaching and they have questions and they make them up. I don't do that. I'm like here, if there's no intention, then I'll just go, okay, guys, there's no intentions for today. I'm going to go start my day or continue my day. I'm just here, unscripted, completely real, completely raw, coming from nothing. Cause I want to just really be with what opens up in the space, the holistic home to be really productive, productive as I have so much to accomplish with this week. Okay, great. Let's see some more come through, but holistic home, you may be who I work with today, which is great. Uh, so I just want to also share with you a, a completion or a semi-completion that I had on the weekend. So, you know, had a really lovely, relaxed weekend. We don't have much of a choice uh, during lockdown. So thank you, Holistic Home. Uh, if you uh, do have an intention, what would you love for yourself this week? Please type it in, whether you're here on Facebook or whether you're here on Instagram. Back to savers for Suzanne. Yes. Kelly of the house. I love that. Kelly of the house. Sounds like your own TV show. I want to be closer to selling our family home so I can start planning our next primary residence. Okay, great. Another great intention. Uh, Kelly, what I'd love you to do, my love, is when you say I'd love to be closer to selling our family home, can you distinguish exactly what closer looks like? What, what does that mean? Does that mean you're going to choose an agent? You're going to have it launched? Like, I wouldn't mind, um, I wouldn't mind working with you, I think. Let's just see. Let's see what comes through. So this weekend, uh, I signed uh, divorce papers and not something that I ever imagined myself doing. I was married for 20 years. Um, my ex-husband Lincoln proposed to me after uh, six days. We were married for 20 years. We made two beautiful babies and uh, we just got to a point where we were growing in different directions. Our values changed and we couldn't come together on some pretty key components um, that were, you know, priorities in our life. And it's all amicable and mutual and, and fine. It hasn't been easy. It's been both heartbreaking and liberating. But yeah, this weekend I signed divorce papers and 
uh, it was a really interesting moment, you know, like I was sitting there at the Justice of the Peace signing the paper and I had this thought of, wow, 20 odd years ago, I signed a marriage certificate you know, in one of the most amazing, blissful, beautiful days. I am going to do a podcast around this uh, when I launch my podcast around how do you consciously complete relationships, whether it's a 20 year marriage or it's a business partnership or whether it's a friendship where you're just not, uh, you know, really supporting each other to fly. And uh, yeah, it was just a really, really interesting experience. So that was one one thing that I had uh, to complete on the weekend. Uh, so intention, we've got two set in. So I want to be closer to selling my family home so I can start planning our next primary resident uh, or to be really productive I, as I have so much to accomplish this week. Okay, are there any more coming through? There's two great questions. Um, do you know, I think I'm going to go with, um, at this for today, the holistic home, because I think the content might be really relevant to a lot more people at this time. Um, oh, it's, it's you the whole way. Oh, the holistic home. It's you full stop. <laughs> Uh, oh no. Okay. So the Kelly of the house has the house selling one. All right. Holistic home. I'm going to choose you this morning because I do think your question may uh, connect with a few more people just at this time. And Kelly of the house, if I get some time at the end, I'm going to offer you something. My first thing for you, Kelly, because uh, I want to give you something as well, is start to define what that next step is. So you want to be closer to selling your family home. So do you know what the next step is? Do you need to get your house ready for sale? Have you met with an agent? Have have you interviewed three agents? Have you, it doesn't sound like you've put it on the market yet. So feel free to let me know. All right, let's get stuck into it. First of all, um, the holistic home, my love, are you, can you, would you be open? I've forgotten your first name again. Can you type in your first name, the holistic home and B, how would you feel about joining in and coming onto this conversation live, regardless of how you look? You know, Diana from New Zealand, she came on last Friday. She had a huge breakthrough um, and was moved to tears and is in major action. Ah, Nicole, beautiful. Now, Nicole, are you open to joining the video and to getting, you know, free coaching from me where I can see your face and we can all connect with you? Let me know. Fast game's a good game. Oh my God, of course she says. Okay, so Nicole, all you need to do, thank you, my love. Can we give some love and emoji to Nicole because she's literally gonna just come on to Instagram, get some live coaching, uh, which will be faster than waiting for text as well. So Nicole, just sc uh, scroll to the bottom of your phone and go onto Instagram and you'll find a request to join live button. Uh, and here, oh, who we got? No, we've got somebody else <laughs> requesting to join the live. Coach. Jody, um, Coach Jody, thank you for requesting. So Nicole, please, please choose the button. You're getting some lovely support. By the way, as I shared my signing of the divorce papers and how to consciously complete relationships, is that um, is that topic of interest to you? Is that something you want to hear about? Are you interested to find out uh, about? You know, how do you have powerful conversations? How do you be in relationship with others where you need to complete uh, a, a complete a situation? She can't find the button. Nicole can't find the button. Um, okay. So a lot, on the bottom of your screen, you'll see that there's two faces. Um, and I can see Coach Rain Jody. Oh, Jody Cochran. <laughs> hey, Jody. Uh Yes, that topic will be amazing, says Kelly. Beautiful. Kelly, feel free to um, answer my question too, my love, because as Nicole's figuring out how to join. So Nicole, if you go to the bottom of your phone, I'm assuming you're on your phone. I don't have that. Uh, okay, oh, that's a bugger. All right, mm, you do, you will, you will have it. Can you see some faces on the bottom of your screen? And if you press it, it'll says join video. Um, if anyone else can give Nicole some advice on how to join this live video, that would be great because I really want to see your face. I think you leave, then rejoin, and it should come up. All right, so Nicole, leave, Pam says, and then rejoin, and it should come up. It chose it for me, so I hope that works for you. Uh, Lucy says I don't have them either. All right, someone's just requested to join. The Holistic Home, she's figured it out. 
Hey, Nicole, we're just waiting for you to tune in. Now, if you are on Facebook, we are going live with Nicole on Instagram, providing some... Co- Here she is. Oh, my God, you figured it out. Hi, Hi. beautiful. You figured it out. Yes, I did. Well I done. Did Good morning. Hi. Welcome. I'm so I'm so glad. That's fantastic. Uh, really, first of all, welcome. I know you tune in most mornings, and it's lovely to see your face, Nicole, and lovely to have you here. And thank you for being I'm open. Move out of that way. Sorry. Yeah, okay, that's going. all right. Thank you for being open to being coached live by me this morning. And um, yeah, let's get stuck straight into right. it so we can be awesome. of service. So everyone that's watching, uh, we've got Nicole here now. Nicole, if you can just ask your question live, that would be great. Sorry, I missed that. So if you can ask your question live, that would be oh, awesome. Yeah. I don't get distracted with, oh, there's laundry to do. So, <laughs> yes. Because I'm at home. Yes. And I've got kids and the 
house and everything. Yes. And I tend to be the one to do everything. So I, well, I, you know, I put that upon myself. It's not, a, it's not that I'm ha- I have to. I kind of just go there. Yeah, I hear you. I'm, you're, you're completely recreating me right now, which means that you're speaking my language. Okay, so, so you feel empowered. It's just there's yeah. a lot to do because you run the house and you work from home. Uh, is you yeah. and and you have kids. How old are your kids? Fifteen and twelve. Okay, so they're old enough to help. Yep. And do they help? When I ask them to. Yeah, gotcha. So Athena is saying, "I hear you," with with a big exclamation mark. Okay, and and do you work from home as well? Yes. And yes, are you do. are you working full time? I'm self-employed, so, you know, it, it varies how yeah. full-time I am. But, yes, I do, yeah. Okay. I'm studying as well. So I've got, like, all these things that I've got to cover, you know. So yeah, yeah, okay. Trying to get it all done. Got it. So you feel empowered. Like, you don't feel yeah. stuck and stopped. So what's the what's the block or the breakdown for you other than distraction because of oh, kids and okay. washing? It's a, it's a lack of discipline, like, Saying actually no, that laundry can wait. That you know, distraction can is not important enough. Okay, okay, good it, good it, good it. That's a new word. Good, got it. So good it is a combination of good and got it. It's a new word we just I just created, right? Good it. So, um, what is your belief of yourself? What do you tell yourself, Nicole? So you're empowered. But there's a lot on. You're studying. Yeah. You work from home. You have a 15 and a 12 year old. You get distracted by got to do the washing and then get something out of the freezer for yeah. dinner and all that stuff, right? What do you tell yourself? What is your belief system about you? I'm, only I can do it all. Okay. I'm, I'm the best. Got it. So I just want you to let that land for a minute. And everyone else watching, maybe Nicole's now recreating you. So your belief, right, is. Only I can do it all and I'm the best at it. <laughs> do you get that? Yeah. Now, Absolutely. nothing good or bad or right or wrong. It's just definition is decisive. So whatever you decide, you have to be right about it. So when you decide, yeah. like, I, only I, like, I have to do it all and because mm-hmm. I'm really good at it, what is the... What is the impacts of that? How does that belief system that you have to be right about, how does that impact you physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? I'm stretched too thin. So then I become really, um, what's the word, where you you then feel angry because you feel like you're doing everything. Yeah, res- so resentful. Like, I get resentful. It, but yeah. you get uh, frustrated. Yes. And then you get angry and blame everyone else for being lazy. Yeah, because we go into victim land, right? And I get resentful. Yeah. I resent people. I'm just like, ah, and I don't feel respected and rah, rah, rah. Yeah. Okay. So you get frustrated. You get angry. You you get potentially disappointed in others. How does it um, impact you physically? I guess it would increase my anxiety. Um, uh Physically, I get tired. Yeah, and I do you feel tired. tense? Like, do you feel do you hold tension in your shoulders or oh, your back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Back, everything ends up hurting, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, so you're carrying the load, you get tired and mm. and stressed, and your anxiety raises, right? So not a not a great, healthy, peaceful state to be in. How does all of that overwhelm? Because you've got the I have to do it all because I'm really good at it. And then, therefore, you have to clean the house. You have to do all the shopping and the cooking and the meals and the washing. You have to study and you have to work and take care of kids' needs because you're good at it. And then you're carrying all the weight of the world. We know how it affects you physically. We know how it's affecting you. Um, What I want to know is how is it affecting you emotionally? How do you feel about all the your personal stuff? piling up whilst you're picking up and providing for others how do you feel emotionally exhausted yeah emotionally drained um but also you know i the part of me actually likes the fact that i've provided all of this for my family okay talk to me about that what part of you likes that you provide for your family it's because you know i make the 
lovely food and I provide beautiful environment and, the, you know, all of that stuff, it, it gives me a kick, you know, because I do get appreciated. They do say, oh, mum, thanks so much. And okay. Husband, you're amazing. So I'm getting that. Validation. validation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done the five love languages quiz, Nicole? Yes. What's your, is you, are you acts of service? Of course you are. <laughs> Yeah, sister, I'm with you, right? I'm lax of service yeah. too. I love providing for my girls. Oh, I love it. I love it too. I actually, yeah, you know, and I don't mind cleaning the house and making it a temple and making it beautiful and nice. Yet I've also got stuff to do, right? And then I do get like you, I get resentful and exhausted and whatever. Okay, got it. So I want you to really get that you have fundamentally, you and everyone watching this, that there's many women saying, yes, me too. Oh my God, me too. No strategy, Nicole, is going to make a difference until we create the orientation you're in. And the orientation you're in is built upon the beliefs that you have. And the beliefs that you have right now are, I have to do it all because I do it the best. A. The other part of this orientation, Nicole, as you well distinguished, is it's your love language. So the way you give love is through acts of service. However, it's also, I've got, I got chills, they're multiplying. The way you receive love is the same way. So if people do things for you, if a cup of tea is made for you, are you with me here? If someone does something yeah. for you, does that make you feel loved and seen and appreciated? Yes, it does. But I often feel uncomfortable when people offer to make me things or give me things. Yes, why? Like Got it. So what's what's your belief system there? So people are wanting to contribute to you. It's uncomfortable for you. What is what do you believe about that? Um I'm not worthy, I guess. I guess that's what it is. Yes. Yeah, I feel Be like I don't deserve it because I don't know why. Yeah. Not yeah. Why. I guess that's what it is. I can't yeah, well, no, I think you've hit it on the head. And by the way, you've got Emily saying here, you're honest. Thank you for your honesty about how you feel. And I want to, I want to second that. I really, I mean, I said, be open and honest. You're like, yeah, I'm not like you're being so straight. I love it. So I just want you to get, you're waking up and you're being out in the world. You, Nicole wakes up and her orientation, your orientation is, I've got to do it all. I do it better than anyone. It's how I give my love, but I'm actually not worthy to be given back to and receive love and be given and be contributed to. And then in addition to that, when I do give, I get validation. So I get acknowledgement and I get love. Now, can you see what a vicious circle that is? Because you are being governed by disempowered beliefs that if you don't unhook them and create something more empowered and get comfortable with being uncomfortable, being contributed to and busting this myth that you aren't worthy. Because I'll tell you one thing, my love, it's completely inauthentic for you to live that persona and then be stressed out, anxious, exhausted, tired, frustrated, resentful and unhappy. And then in this cycle of not getting stuff done for yourself, it's inauthentic, meaning you're pretending you're fine and it's covering up you're not. And there are many impacts. Do you get that? Yeah. Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Great. Now, tell me, my love, what do you see is the inevitable end result if nothing changes today? I missed that. You cut out just for a second. Sorry. What do you see is the inevitable end result if nothing changes? Just gotten old and nothing's ever changed and just miserable and unhappy. You know what I mean? Like, I know, Mrs. Beaver. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so is that what you want to create for yourself in your life? Of course not. Of course not. No. Okay. But do you know? You're like, of course not. Of course not. But can you see, Nicole, you are creating that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm also modeling that. Yeah. Oh, you just gave me chills again. Yes. Your yes. being educates and influences 
your kids in the home. So you can say one thing, but your being is the one that speaks the loudest. Um, Olivia on Facebook has just written, how did you know this about me? <laughs> so I want you to get, you're really, and this is why I chose you because I just felt that this, I could feel that this would be a topic that would be, have a broader brushstroke. Receiving with gratitude, we've got a comment here. Receiving with gratitude is as big a gift to someone uh as giving with love. Yes, I completely agree. All right, great. If you're tuning in, I, and I know a few of you just have, I am providing live leading life and coaching and business coaching to the beautiful Nicole, who's sitting outside with the birds, who's distinguishing. (laughs) It's gorgeous. I love it. Who's distinguishing her problem or her intention today was this week. I want to smash some stuff that I've been procrastinating about. I need a breakthrough because I've got so much to do. And we're looking at, well, what is, what is, what's going on within her that is creating this reality? So Nicole's done a great job to distinguish that if nothing changes today, her inevitable future is a tired old fifties like housewife. And she's not committed to it and she knows that's the inevitable future. But Nicole notice how knowing and, and doing something else. Like knowing makes no difference. You know where you're headed, hence you put your hand up today. But notice how knowing makes no difference to creating a change, right? Mm. Do you get me? Yes. All right. So are you willing now to have a breakthrough and really look at what is the biggest handbrake that's holding you back? Because you've got amazing emotional intelligence and awareness. I know the answer. It's my ego. Your she-go, exactly. Now I'm going to unpack the five distinctions, the five benefits that your ego is going to get out of this. But what do you believe your ego is getting out of this? Um, <clears throat> I'm right. Mm-hmm. That's the big one. I get to be right, like you said. Yeah, you get to be right. You get to be right that you have... Oh no, our ego does not like to be wrong, my love. But, you know, <clears throat> would you rather be right and exhausted and anxious and stressed and grow up as an exhausted, old, tired 50s housewife? Or would you rather prove yourself wrong and create a whole new way of being, which means you can still come from an act of service for your fat, your hubby and your kids, but also get the stuff that's important to you and your heart? Because I would say one of the impacts, Nicole, is... You can't progress when you can't progress in your business and you can't progress in your study if you are being right about I have to do it all and I do it better than everybody else. Do you get that? Yeah, because you know what? I'm not. You're not progressing. No. I know. You can't. You actually can't. And progress is the key to happiness. When we can see that we've lost those kilos or we've handed in those assignments or we've got a new client or we've completed that project or we've recorded the intro and outro of our podcast, like when we can see the needle moving forward on the things that matter to our heart just for us, not to pay the bills, not to, you know, for our enjoyment, that makes us happy. So one of the biggest impacts, Nicole, whether you're present to it or not, you're present to the exhaustion and the resentment and the frustration, but fundamentally you won't feel happy and lit up and on fire. You're not depressed, but you're not blissed out either. Makes sense? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, so you get that you get to be right. So thank you. Emily's typed in number one, she gets to be right. So I'm going to unpack the rest and I want you to tune in to, Nicole, which one do you think is the biggest handbrake? Because my friends that are watching here on Facebook and here on Instagram, you too, like Nicole, may have high emotional intelligence and you may have deep self-awareness of what you're doing that isn't working. But notice that knowing what you're doing doesn't necessarily make the change. So Nicole's about to have a breakthrough in really seeing what's become more important to her than doing what she knows really matters. So number one benefit of your ego is you get to be right about I got to do it all and I'm, I do it better than everybody else. And I'm not worthy to be contributed to. Number two, you get to avoid responsibility. Now, I don't think you necessarily avoid a lot of responsibility, but how I want you to look at this question here or this distinction, Nicole, is this also means we're avoiding responsibility of living our true 
purpose, yeah. our big picture. Yeah. You with me? I know you get that. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Bev's just written, thank you for last week. It helped lots. Thank you for all the support I received from our listeners. Good on you, Bev. Thanks for letting us know. Share with us, Bev, what breakthrough you achieved for yourself. Number three, you get to stay or your ego, Nicole, gets to stay safe and comfortable. You get to hang out in familiar territory of being busy, being busy, unfulfilled, unhappy. Uh, it's familiar territory. You know how this feels. Let me ask you, how long have you hung out here? How long have you been feeling? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that side told 30, me. but 30, uh, 30 years, I reckon. 30 years. Guys, can we give Nicole some emoji love and some support because she's distinguishing that she's been operating in this way of being for 30 years and she knows if she doesn't make a change today, she's going to grow up old and tired like a 50s unfulfilled housewife in service of everybody else and pitching a tent at victim land and then people will, you know, say something nice in her eulogy and then they'll go and eat cucumber sandwiches and that's Nicole's life. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah. And this is what we got to get straight about, my love. Like who knows when it's time? Like who knows when it's time? And you said, I'm also teaching my kids that this is the way to live. This is the way to be unconsciously. It's the opposite of what I, what I really think. I know. It's the opposite of what I really want them to. Of course it is. Of course it is. So you get to be right about your beliefs. You get to avoid responsibility of living your true nature out loud and living your fullest potential. You get to stay safe and comfortable for 30 years, hanging out in familiar territory you don't like, but you get to complain about. Number four, you get to be a victim, meaning you get to act like you don't have the power to change this reality. And this is just the way it is. Or number five, you get to seek significance. You get, because you don't feel worthy and you don't feel good enough, you create a lot of drama and chaos and swirl around you so you can feel something. So I want you to tune in intuitively and everybody else listening that said, yes, me too, me too, me too. I want you to do this for yourself. And because Nicole's done a beautiful job of sharing herself vulnerably, but like tune in for you. We will do all of them. We will do all of them, Nicole, but there will be one major handbrake. Is it you're addicted to being a right, right about your beliefs? You're avoiding responsibility of living your greatest life. You're playing safe and comfortable, hanging out in familiar territory that you know how it feels. You don't like it, but you know that place well. You're being a victim, acting like you don't have the power and it's just the way it is, or you're unconsciously creating drama to feel something for yourself in your life. Which one do you reckon is driving you or said in another way, which is the greatest currency of your ego? Which one's driving? Yeah. yeah. Which one's really sitting there like a sloth relishing? Either two or five. So, so either avoid responsibility or seek significance. Try I think it's seek significance, yeah. Well, my love, that would make sense based on your fundamental belief is I'm not, I, I've got to do it all. I yeah. do it better than everybody else. That's an ego belief for sure. Yeah. I'm not worthy of being contributed to, but I'm exhausted, resentful, frustrated, annoyed, not doing my stuff, overwhelmed, and you're creating it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's all by choice. And you've been doing it yeah. for 30 years or more. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. so, you're, so the truth of the matter is, and you're doing such a beautiful job, you are being a drama queen. Your ego, <laughs> it's true. Yay! I know. But your ego, which is always our wounded child, which is the one that didn't get love and nurturing or acknowledgement and praise. So love and nurturing is what we want from the feminine, from our mother. Acknowledgement and praise is what we want from the masculine, our father. And we didn't get that 100% of the time. Which one do you think is behind that significance, seeking love and uh, nurturing or acknowledgement and praise? Which one didn't you get that you wanted as a kid? Probably, well, both. But I would say acknowledgement and praise. Yeah, Probably. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I can feel that. Yeah. So how old are you now, Nicole? 45. 
Yep. And it, it, can you think about a, an age or a time as a kid where you really, uh, we don't have to unpack the story, but if I ask you to go within, which you're doing a beautiful job of, and connect to how old you were where you really wanted acknowledgement and praise, potentially from your dad or a father figure and you didn't get it. Do you know, how, can you think of how old you might have been? Oh, from early on, so four. Yeah. Four, five, yeah. yeah. Young. Young. Even younger. So (laughs) we're doing well. So here's the truth. Or let me say this. Here's a truth, Nicole, right? It's not about is this right or wrong. It's about do these distinctions work? And, And believe me, I get to the privilege of doing this every day with people. What I want you to try on is how old did you say you are? 40, 45. Yeah. So I want you to try on. You are a 45 year young woman wife, mother of 15 and a 12-year-old that is being governed by a four-year-old who is desperately seeking uh, validation, acknowledgement, and praise. It is the four-year-old in you that is driving the bus of your life. Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. Yeah. And you just went, ooh, what was that? What do you get, hear, feel for yourself? Like I feel like what I'm getting is like there's a little four-year-old having a tantrum, not getting what they want. Correct, yeah. Mm. And does that make you feel powerless at times? Yeah, it sounds sort of, it sounds ridiculous, but I know that it's not because it makes sense. Well, well, yeah, Yeah. it's, it's, you know, I, I hear your truth and my invitation is, don't judge it, right? Because you're a 45 year old now, but what we're doing here is we're distinguishing. You have an automatic way of being. You've been, you think you've been that way for 30 years. You've actually been that way for 41 years. And I want you to get that your four year old is op, is driving the bus of your life and she is trying to get what she didn't get it for from your hubby, from your kids, from your work colleagues, from clients, from friends, family, life, unconsciously. You don't wake up consciously as a four-year-old and go, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a tantrum today and I'm going to be, you know, blah, 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 to get attention, acknowledgement and praise. True? You don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I get, of course. But can you get the truth of that's actually what's going on? So let's go a little deeper. You're doing a great job, really great job. What is it that your four-year-old needs to hear or receive or be witnessed in? What does she desire? Hmm. What did you not get that you really would have loved to have gotten? To be told that I was really good at something and actually that I was trying really hard because I was always told I didn't try hard enough. Yeah. So so you so that's what happened. You were told at the age of 4, keep trying, you're not trying hard enough. Yeah. Nicole, what did you make that mean? Just then it was like, well I'm making up for that now because I'm proving that I try harder than I possibly can all of the time. To do yes. So, yes. Yeah. So, can you feel this now? Can you feel yeah. the emotion behind it because I can. So so there you were as a kid and and you were told Try harder. You need to try. You're not trying hard enough. We know how you're not good enough. Yeah. What did someone say? You weren't good enough, or is that what you decided? Um, both. Exactly. So someone actually said, "You're not good enough," because I want you to distinguish this. Or did they say you're not trying, or you're not trying hard enough? Try harder. Oh yeah. Okay, so try on, and I want you to really block out the world right now. I want you to hear this like it's the first time you've ever heard it. Here's what I want you to try on. You were told at the age of four, try harder. You're not trying hard enough. And what you decided is I'm not good enough. And at the age of four, when you decided I'm not good enough to compensate for that and then to get the acknowledgement and praise from whoever told you try harder, you're not trying hard enough, you have overcompensated for 41 years. Yes. Got that? Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. I never thought of it as overcompensating. 
overcompensation, but that sort of overdeveloped that, I think. You have, and it's a vicious cycle because you have to be right about your belief that you're not good enough. And as you said at the start of this conversation, you're not worthy. So if you're not good enough and you're not worthy because at four someone said, try harder, you're not trying hard enough, and you've overcompensated for 41 years, n n your inevitable future is, yeah, die exhausted, maybe prematurely, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So what are you hearing and seeing for yourself as you distinguish, wow, I'm 41 and I'm being governed by a four-year-old who's overcompensating for the fact that I decided I wasn't good enough. What are you seeing and hearing and feeling for yourself in this moment? I need to, to the quiet and the chatter in my head of all those things that I think that I'm supposed to be doing when I don't actually need to be doing them. Mm. Um, I need to uh, put some boundaries up energetically and physically almost, <laughs> like shut the door to the laundry maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that. Like it's, I know that it's in my power and in my control to, to um, create that sort of buffer. Yeah. Sure. That's, that's definitely one thing you can do. Can I offer you something? Yes. Thank you. We need to connect with your four-year-old. Okay. She needs, oh, right, 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 right. yeah, yeah. She needs to know that she's more than enough. And in fact, um, yeah, I, I want to do a little exercise with you if you'd be open with it. Yeah, sure. Oh God, I love you. Can we give some Nicole some love, please? Because she's like, yeah, sure. She has no idea what I'm going to do. She's just showing okay. up. She's being super real, raw, and vulnerable. Here she is, and and wow, you're getting like, is this a valuable conversation for you, Nicole? Are you getting oh, something? Amazing. Yeah, cool. great. Okay, awesome. So everybody else also that's feeling very similar feelings to Nicole, please do this exercise for yourself. Okay, uh, I actually am going to be. This is one of the meditations I'm going to be recording in my upcoming um, website. And so this is going to be a free meditation with beautiful music, but for the purpose of time and for now. Uh, here's what I invite you to do. And for those that are watching, Bev's just also written she's been able to control her drinking as a result of jumping on here and getting free coaching. So fist bumps for Bev. Let's give Bev some love as well. Thank you, Simon. I appreciate your compliment. All right, N Nicole, I'm going to invite you. And again, you've been so vulnerable and courageous. I'm, I am going to invite you and everybody else that wants to do this and do this deeply. Uh, and yes, live on social media, but who gives a rats about everybody else? Let's just do it for us. Nicole, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes for a minute, if you will. Okay, if you're, ha if you're okay to do that and just keep them closed. Everybody else that wants to do this exercise and heal the little one within, then please close your eyes, right? Let's just close our eyes and I'm going to talk you through something that's going to provide something for your inner child that is overcompensating for the fact that he or she didn't get the acknowledgement, praise or love and nurturing that he or she desired. So Nicole, I want you to just imagine a bus. And I want you to imagine 45-year-old you getting on the bus. And as you get on the bus, I want you to see four-year-old Nicole sitting in the driver's seat of the bus. Her legs don't touch the floor. She definitely cannot reach the pedals. She has her little hands on the steering wheel and the steering wheel is literally two-thirds of the size of her body. She can't see over the dash, let alone through this, the windscreen. She doesn't have a key and she definitely doesn't have a license. Yet this beautiful, divine young girl has done every single thing she believed she needed to do to survive life and to get through this thing called life and to survive the belief that she made it for or even younger that she wasn't good enough because she was told she needs to try harder. I want you to walk over to her. Put your hand on her left shoulder. And just crouch down so you can be eye level with her. I want you to look her in the eyes. And Nicole, if you can keep your eyes closed, you're doing a beautiful job. I want you just to take a moment now, if you will, to acknowledge her for trying her best, for doing and giving her all. And just say whatever it is for you to say to her 
Now, just if you will, just say whatever you feel from your heart to say to her little heart at four. What would I say to her now? Yep, and stay in the meditation, um, stay yeah. right there. Like, look her in the eyes and just acknowledge yeah. her. I know you're doing your best. I know you're trying as hard as you can. And everything you do is amazing. Okay, great. And do you feel the truth of that or does it feel like you're just saying the words? I'm trying to feel the truth in that. Yeah, it's it's great. That's honest. That's a really honest answer. Yeah. Okay, I want you to just be yeah. with her, okay? I want you now just to invite her to hop out of the driver's seat of the bus and invite her to sit in the passenger seat next to you. And just notice how she feels getting out of the seat that she's been in for 41 years. And just yeah. let her sit in the passenger seat. Let her know she can pop her seatbelt on and give her a little snack pack. Because you're yeah. about to go on a wonderful adventure together. I want you to look at her now. How does she feel that she's no longer in the driver's seat of your life? Relax. Relax, great. I want you to breathe that relaxed state in your body. She can just be a kid. Who was it that told you you weren't trying hard enough? Oh, both of my parents, yeah. Both of your parents. Now, as a parent now, do you believe that as a parent, if you tell your children that they're not trying hard enough, it's because they want to instill a belief that their children aren't good enough? Or do you believe now as a parent, a parent will say these things to inspire and encourage their children to try harder because they can see their potential? Yes. Yes. The latter? The last one, yeah. yeah. Now, are you willing to reframe the belief that you created at four? See, what happened, my love, at four is you were told by both of your parents to try harder. You decided that meant you weren't good enough and you've been living like that belief is the truth for your whole life. Yeah. You're a parent now and you know you've got a 15 and a 12-year-old. You know what it's like to encourage your children. Have you, have you ever told your kids to keep going and push through or try harder? Yeah, I, I never say try harder. Of I course you wouldn't because you have encouraged. encouraged, yeah, yeah. But you've encouraged yeah. them, right? Can you see that potentially your parents were just trying to encourage you in the way they knew how? Yes. Do yes, you I think do get that. Okay, can you just take a moment to breathe that in? That what that's they use the words they had at the time, they use the consciousness that they had at the time. And how do you think they would feel if they knew that you as a beautiful, divine, precious, full of greatness and possibility, four year young human being on the planet made a decision that you weren't good enough? How do you think they would feel if they knew that that was your reality for forty one years? I think that they would feel like they obviously didn't have that intention. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Got it. So now what I want you to do is um, who's responsible then for creating the belief that you're not enough? I oh, mean. Is it the truth? No. No, got it. So what I want you to do now is we're going to re you reframe this. You know, you know what your belief is. You know what's driving it. You know what the impacts are. You've distinguished your inevitable future. You've gone back in time and you've distinguished what happened as a four-year-old. And now you're taking your four-year-old who's been overcompensating all of her life. You've taken her out of the driver's seat. She's relaxed. She can be a kid. She can swing her legs and eat her carrot sticks. Whilst you get in the driver's seat of your life and really create a whole new way of being. Now, before you get in the driver's seat, Nicole, you're a creator. You can either get in the seat of the bus, you can create a Ferrari, you can ride a star, a horse, a submarine, a hot air balloon. Do you want to stay in the bus or do you want to create a whole new vehicle as a metaphor for yourself and your life moving forward? Yeah, definitely. What do you want? Yeah. What is it? What do you create? What would you love? And it can be anything. Oh. Great. It could be honestly anything. I've, I had someone, they chose a whale last week. It's up yeah, to you. I was, I was thinking unicorn. Okay, awesome. It's your life, right? Your life. Awesome. So imagine the unicorn. This unicorn is yeah. now 
a, a symbol of you becoming the creator of your own reality. It's about you at 45 getting on the saddle or the bareback of the unicorn and consciously driving forward, unencumbered by a limiting belief that you decided as a four-year-old. You with me? Yeah, got it. Great. Now, what I want you to do, is there a saddle on the unicorn? Are there reins no. or are you just bareback, yeah? Yeah. Okay, great. So I want you to take your place on the unicorn. And then do you want to invite your four-year-old to hop on the back with you and wrap her arms around you? Or do you need some space on the unicorn by yourself? No, she's got to come too. She, beautiful. Great choice. Great. So just take a moment to visualize the unicorn of your life, which represents, well, you tell me, what does this unicorn represent for you moving forward? It represents freedom, um, uniqueness, Nice. Um, not being bound by sort of too many rules and structure and things like that. Just being a free spirit. Beautiful. Love it. Freedom, free spirit, liberated from rules and structure, right? And you're yeah. consciously, you're in the, you're in the front and little Nicole's in the back. Okay. So I want you to now really take your place, see the color of the mane of the unicorn and just connect to that feeling. And I, on that unicorn, I want you to, to create a new belief for yourself that is empowering you to be in that liberated free state. So we're giving up the belief that you're not worthy and you're not enough. And what yeah. would be a new empowered belief that you can create for yourself in your life? Yeah, it's, the, it's that freedom to choose and do anything that I actually want to do and that I'm going to I don't need people's approval for it. Ah, nice. So, my love, if you were someone that had, you didn't need people's approval and you were free to fly and live your life by design and you were still giving to your hubby and your kids, who who are you being? Who is that? Who are you being? If you can distill it down to a word or a phrase. Um, empowered. Okay, great. So try that on, yeah. right? I want you to really embody that. So rather than telling yourself I'm not worthy and I'm not enough, you're now like I'm empowered and can I offer you something else to add because it had a lot of energy when you spoke it. Free. Yes, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> you're a psychic woman. Exactly. Who I am is empowered and free. Now, you're doing yeah. great. We've got five minutes until this 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 um, eliminates. Now, just bring you eliminates. What does that mean? Till the live stops. Okay. That's actually what I want to say. Now, Nicole, I invite you to gently open your eyes as you've created this bit. And can we give Nicole some love both on Facebook and Instagram? Because she's just re recreated and reframed a belief that she's been running for 41 years. That's had her exhausted and resentful and not owning her own time and projects because she's been unconsciously seeking validation from her hubby and kids and community because she made a decision at four that she wasn't good enough and wasn't worthy. She's reframed it. She's now writing you know, on the unicorn of life and she's decided who she is, is empowered and free. Nicole, from that place, from this standpoint, how do you see all the stuff that you've got to get done this week? A lot clearer. Great. And what is an action you can take as a woman who is now empowered and free? What one thing are you going to do for yourself this week and get it done by Friday morning, by Friday, eight o'clock? Because we're going to tune in again. Okay. Um, what one thing am I going to do? For yourself from this empowered and free state. Yes. Melissa on Facebook's just written with all these beautiful emojis. Enjoy the ride, Nicole, on your unicorn. Okay, yeah, great. No, but no, just as she's offering that to say she's in, say enjoying yeah, the ride. So I'm just trying to think like I think that it's about enjoying the experience rather than feeling like I've got all this stuff done. Just enjoy this experience of what I need to do. Okay, great. So you're choosing to just enjoy the experience of life rather than focus on the to do list. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. That's quite conceptual though. I want you to get okay. very specific. So, and there's no right answer, but you'll feel it like we felt it stuff during this conversation. So Nicole, this week when you're being, generating being empowered and free, free to choose what you need to do rather than focus on the to-do list. 
What do you physically see yourself doing as an action to express this new way of being? Um, and it needs to be something specific. So you're just going to enjoy being, I got that, but it's hard to measure that. What is something yeah, you... Okay, got it. You have to or you choose to? I choose to. Nice. Okay, so as, as um, a woman empower, empowered and free, you're actually, what you're going to do is you're going to request that the kids do their fair share and that hubby helps you. My invitation is can you make that really specific and either sit down together and make a chore plan, not just for this week but for every week and designate stuff so yeah. you can just step off. And and promise yourself that you won't do other people's jobs if they don't do it and you'll actually, you know, hold them to account and say, you know, I actually, yeah. Pardon? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, are you, yeah. pardon, and not take over because that would be yeah. the old you going, oh, well, I have to do it all and I do it better than everybody else. <laughs> yeah? Yes, I'm going to not take over. That's the, actually, that's what it is. Yeah, that's because okay. that would be you fulfilling an old belief. Believe me, I have the similar belief. I clean the house better. I, you know, like, but it doesn't serve me and it doesn't teach my daughters how to be self reliant. Yeah, that's the thing because my kids do will do their own laundry, but then I tend to take over because they don't hang it out right. Or Got it. So, yeah, okay. Well, so you've had a breakthrough, you've found a, you've been overcompensating for a belief that you've had at four and you're choosing to be a woman who is empowered and free and you're going to make requests from your hubby and kids and you're not going to step in and do things for people, which means are you more likely to have time to do the other stuff that matters for you? Yes. Great. Definitely. Now, I'm going to ask because we've got probably a minute to go. My friends here on Instagram or Facebook, who is going to hold uh, Nicole in ac accountable and support her to really live this new way of being out loud in reality and take it from conceptual? So who'd be willing to put their hand up and, and really just be, um, you know, befriend Nicole and just check in and see how she's going and, you know, give her some support? Um, I have to go, but I'm happy to keep Nicole accountable. Luna Karmic Tribe. Luna, can you please connect with Nicole? Nicole, can you please share what your Instagram handle is? Thank you, Luna. We're friends already. Oh, my God. Bam. Here's one we prepared earlier. Beautiful. Awesome. Um, so relatable, Nicole. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thanks, Tanja. Great session. Awesome. Uh, Nicole, what's present for you now? We've got a, a minute and 33 seconds to go. What did you learn from yourself today and what can you see is now possible? That I, um, there's not, it's not about blame and it's not about um, judgment. Uh, it's, it's about choices, mm. making choices and, and acknowledging but not judging. Nice. And if you now are going to ride the unicorn of life and your little self is on the back with you, so you're in charge and you've reframed yes. who you are is empowered and free, what do you see is possible for your future now? We knew what it was going to be like. What's possible now as we have 50 seconds to go? I can pretty much do whatever I want, really, you know? <laughs> Bam. Yeah. Well, there is, boom, Intentional Monday done and dusted so when are you going to have the conversation with your kids and hubby right now yes can you please message me how you go and my friends that's the way it's done nicole bless you angel thank you so much awesome. for spending no, thank you. That was awesome. you are awesome thanks for spending an hour with me having some free leading life and business coaching and to you that is watching remember i show up here every monday and every friday just like this working with people just like nicole so do yourselves a favor Feel, become a devotee fill your cup with self-love and go brew you i love you nicole thanks everyone for tuning so in let me know how you go all right, we've finished with uh, Instagram because that is timed and here we are on Facebook. Mary says, I believe unicorn poo is magic. <laughs> awesome. Um, that's a very cute belief to have. Thanks again for tuning in and uh, please know that if you 
personally know someone, maybe it's you <laughs> that you know, that would love a breakthrough in any area of yourself, your life, your business, your work, your relationships, your passion, your purpose, your leadership, communication, whatever it is, I'm here for you. Okay, I'm really here for you. I know you couldn't see Nicole, which probably is a bit weird on Facebook, uh, but she's had a beautiful breakthrough. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being here and thanks for sharing your life. Bev, congratulations, my love, on uh, being able to control your drinking. Uh, that is awesome. And um, I'm very much looking forward to when you move into, you know, um, and you've already done that, but my invitation is if your focus is not on controlling your drinking, where else could you put that energy um, now that's going to be really of service to you, my love? So keep me posted and thanks for the update. All right, I'm going to wrap that up. Uh, that's over an hour. So thanks for tuning in to Tea with Tanjali. Be sure to let your friends and family know that this free coaching service is available. There's no reason why any of you need to suffer un you know, silently or unnecessarily because I'm a 100% here for you. Uh, I'll be back on Friday this week, 8 o'clock uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time for Q&A Friday. You ask a Q, I provide my best A. I'll see you soon. Have a beautiful week.